who out there is catching the most balls? No, this isn't some weird episode of Beverly Hills Housewives or whatever it's called where we're sitting around talking about the recent divorcee down the street and her scandalous activities going on. This episode is all about fantasy football wide receivers and which ones are bringing in the most volume. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back into the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle here to continue my series on volume versus efficiency. And today is all about them ball catchers, the wide receivers, and fantasy football that are going to be bringing you the most volume. Now, it listen, just so you know, I can't break down 900 wide receivers in this video. So I took... 20 of the top finishers from fantasy football last year to dive into them a little bit more. Now, we've already talked about running backs and their volume and efficiency. If you've missed those videos, make sure you go back a couple of days. Running back volume monsters and, of course, the most efficient running backs in fantasy football. You can check out both of those videos before you continue on. But we're going to be doing wide receivers volume today. Then we've got wide receiver efficiency coming up and then tight end volume and efficiency as well. But... Before I jump into all the goodness, I just got to remind everybody, the Fantasy Headliners Draft Guide is only about six weeks away from launching. That's right. It is getting closer. So if you want to get yours right now for free, I can tell you exactly how to do that. Either download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com and create a new account using the code word headliners. If you deposit $20 into your account to start playing some uh, picks with, we are going to get you a Fantasy Headliners draft guide for free when it launches here in a couple of months. So again, head over to prizepicks.com or download the app. Create a new account using code word headliners, and you are going to get a free draft guide when it launches in a couple of weeks. So do not miss out on that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you already have a prize picks account, though, you can go to the link right down below. Go over to the fantasyheadliners.com and you can pre-order it right now as well. But it's time to hop into it. We got to talk about wide receivers and their volume. And listen, let's just, we're going to be honest with something right now. You're going to see a whole lot of Cooper Cup at the top of the list. That's just how it went this year. But first, let's take a look at the volume stats. What stats are we going to be looking at when it comes to all of this information? Well, we're going to be looking at targets, receptions, receiving yards, receiving touchdowns. Also going to take a look at what are players doing in the red zone with red zone targets, red zone receptions, and red zone touchdowns as well. Why am I including those different categories? Well, number one, obviously this is a volume video. So we're talking about volume as a whole, but I wanted to include the red zone information as well because the red zone is a very important part of any fantasy wide receivers arsenal right? Those are really critical targets where you could easily put up some points. And that is why it is so important, especially when you're looking at top tier players to have a chance to get more statistics and more volume in the red zone. So let's go ahead and check out targets first. And again, no surprise to anyone that Cooper Cup led the way last year. Devontae Adams coming in at number two, as we know now he's headed out to Las Vegas. Deontay Johnson at number three. Justin Jefferson, Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore, you know, kind of a, I don't want to say he was a a huge disappointment last year, unless you drafted him as your wide receiver one. If you had him as your wide receiver two or three, probably ended up doing okay. If you had him as your wide receiver one, it may have been a little bit more difficult. He really did have some volume last year, but we're going to talk a little bit more about what was his downfall throughout the year. Tyreek Hill now in Miami. He's at number seven. Then Keenan Allen, his teammate. Tyreek Hill's new teammate, Jalen Waddell. He's at number nine with 138 targets. Darnell Mooney rounding out the top 10, the new wide receiver one there in Chicago. Brandon Cooks, Terry McLaurin, Michael Pittman, Hunter Renfro, 
third and Renfro right there. DK Metcalf, Jamar Chase. For as good as Jamar Chase was last year, I bet there, there are some of you right now that look at this and say, what? He was only 16th in targets last year? Yeah. Probably caught you off guard just a little bit. CD Lamb. Debo Samuel, Mike Evans, and A.J. Brown. Now, A.J. Brown is going to finish towards the bottom of this list for a majority of categories because of missing several games. But I wanted to include him so you could still see the overall numbers and just how they weren't nearly as good in the limited time that he did have on the field last year, of course, with our man Ryan Tannehill. Cooper Cup, again, led the way in receptions. Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, Deontay Johnson, Keenan Allen, Jalen Waddle, top 10, 104 receptions last year. Stefan Diggs, Hunter Renfro, DJ Moore, again, top 10 there, top 10 there. Really kind of surprising to see him so high on some of these categories already, knowing that he just didn't produce as high as we would have liked him last year. Brandon Cooks, Michael Pittman, Darnell Mooney, Jamar Chase. Again, such a huge season last year for Jamar Chase. And, I mean, he's going to he's going to show up pretty big here come, uh, <laughs> come the efficiency video. That's for sure. CeeDee Lamb, Terry McLaurin, Debo Samuel, DK Metcalf, Mike Evans, and A.J. Brown. Now, let's take a look at receiving yards. And this is where, again, a couple of things are going to pop up to you that maybe you didn't realize or might surprise you a little bit. Number one, again, Cooper Cup, no surprise. Number one overall. Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Jamar Chase, okay, right there. Like we just mentioned it a minute ago, right? Kind of surprising for as good as he was, for as many receiving yards as he had, for as many touchdowns as he had, for just how dynamic he was as a playmaker to know that he wasn't even really near the top of the league in those specific volume stats when it comes to targets and receptions. I mean, just imagine this year, if he does become that guy, it's probably not going to happen because why? He's got T. Higgins, he's got Tyler Boyd, he's got Joe Mixon. I mean, this is going to be a pretty balanced offense. They're going to throw the ball. They're going to throw the ball quite a bit, but they're going to run it as well. And he's got two other really good wide receivers that can take targets away from him. So I think we're always going to kind of see that with Jamar Chase. It, you know, at least for now anyway, with those three guys being together, where Jamar Chase is going to be ultra efficient at times, but that could lead to some inconsistencies or some streaky performances. Started off great last year, kind of disappeared in the middle of the season because T. Higgins was really the main guy there for a while. And then Jamar Chase came back at the end of the year and really balled out to close things out. So, Hey, you're going to get some streaky performances. Debo Samuel, you know, we talk about Debo Samuel where he finished last year, but, you know, his rushing touchdowns, the most rushing touchdowns ever for a wide receiver in NFL history in one single season. All right. That kind of helped. But volume in terms of targets and receptions were down, but 1,400 receiving yards, man, ultra efficient last year. Just being able to make those plays, yards after the catch, everything like that. Debo Samuel was balling. Tyreek Hill, Stephon Diggs, Deontay Johnson, DJ Moore. Again, top 10 in targets, top 10 in receptions, top 10 in receiving yards. We're going to see in a minute why, though, he was so disappointing. Keenan Allen, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Pittman, Darnell Mooney, Terry McLaurin, Hunter Renfro, Brandon Cooks, Mike Evans, Jalen Waddell, DK Metcalf, A.J. Brown. Mike Evans, Jalen Waddell, DK Metcalf, A.J. Brown. For Mike Evans, really what he did this past year, a lot of his fantasy value was attributed to touchdowns. And again, we'll see that in a second. But a guy like Jalen Waddle, man, you got to think, you know, how are things going to work out this year? Because maybe some of that volume we saw from him comes down, but maybe some of that, uh, some of that efficiency goes up. Because keep in mind, Jalen Waddell, we'll go back here just a second. And so you can see here where we were at. Back to receptions, Jalen Waddell, was at 104, right? 104, but his yardage was way down. So he was seventh there, and then in targets, he was at ninth. So seventh in receptions, seventh in targets, and then all of a sudden we come back to receiving yards, he's 18th. He just wasn't nearly as efficient as we would have liked to be. He got tons of volume. He just wasn't able to do a ton with that volume. He wasn't able to break off a ton of those big plays or to take it home or anything like that. So 
we got to keep that in mind when thinking about Jalen Waddle. that maybe some of those volume stats come down this year, but the efficiency could go through the roof knowing you've got Tyreek Hill. Same thing goes for DK Metcalf. He was the only wide receiver in the fantasy football top 20 or whatever it was in my video the other day that had less than a thousand receiving yards. DK's value last year was 100% strictly on touchdowns. Going over to wide receivers, Cooper Cup, again, 16 receiving touchdowns last year. There's Mike Evans for you. Mentioned in a second ago, his volume last year, his fantasy value, really predicated around those 14 receiving touchdowns. Jamar Chase was way up there. DK Metcalf, there it is right there. 12 touchdowns, 12 receiving touchdowns, but less than 1,000 receiving yards. We can't have that with DK, and we don't know exactly what's going to happen this year with Drew Locke and Geno Smith under center. Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, Stefan Diggs round out the top seven with double-digit touchdowns. Then Tyreek Hill and Hunter Renfro. Jake brought it up on a uh, on our podcast the other day. Would anybody be surprised if Hunter Renfro scored 12 touchdowns this year? And knowing that he had lot nine last year, you know, it kind of makes you think a little bit. Uh, Deontay Johnson, Debo Samuel. Again, Debo Samuel, only six receiving touchdowns. So those rushing touchdowns really came into play. Keenan Allen, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Pittman, Brandon Cook, CeeDee Lamb. Those volume stats could go up this year with no more Amari Cooper. And not really knowing either when we're going to get uh, Michael Gallup back. Then Jalen Waddell, Terry McLaurin, A.J. Brown, D.J. Moore. There it is right there, right? Mentioned it a second ago with D.J. Moore. Okay, top 10 in targets, top 10 in receptions, top 10 in receiving yards, 19th in receiving touchdowns. It's because he only had four. You only had four. So a lot of people are skipping on DJ Brown or DJ Moore this year. And I, and I get it and I understand. And there, there's issues as to why. But the guy is uber talented, number one, right? He's been extremely good since he's entered the league. The one thing that just hasn't followed him yet have been the touchdowns. I mean, it's one of those, it's like the Julio Jones effect, right? For years, people debated Julio Jones being the top wide receiver, and people would be like, yeah, the volume's there. He gets the targets. He gets the receptions. But Matt Ryan just lost it. We got to the red zone, and Matt Ryan either went blind or he had some sort of a malfunction in his head where all of a sudden in the red zone, you forget where your best wide receiver is because Julio just wasn't scoring as much as some of the top wide receivers in the league. And it's something, and that's what pushed the debate. If he scored the touchdowns, there would be no debate. And the same thing goes for DJ Moore. If DJ Moore even scores six touchdowns last year, we're probably not talking about him in the same way. If he scores 10 touchdowns last year, he's probably a guy that really is being considered as a top 12 locked wide receiver, even with Sam Darnold. So that's why I want everyone to kind of see all these stats, see all the names laid out in front of you, because then you get a little bit more of a look into, all right, what am I missing? You know, why is DJ Moore maybe ranked a little bit higher? Oh, DJ Moore didn't finish that high as a wide receiver in fantasy football, but look where he was in some of these volume statistics. Got to keep that in mind come draft day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move to the red zone. With red zone targets, again, Cooper Cup finishing top there. No surprise whatsoever for him. Stefan Diggs, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Deontay Johnson, all these guys considered top red zone targets. It's really interesting to see Debo Samuel with 17 red zone targets, the lowest in the league. And I have to believe, not the lowest in the league, but the lowest out of these uh, these wide receivers here. I have to believe part of that is because towards the end of the season, they stopped targeting him in the red zone and they were actually handing the ball off to him. So probably a little bit because of that. You got to imagine CeeDee Lamb goes up a little bit as well, knowing that uh, there's no more Amari Cooper. Uh, even with uh, A.J. Brown missing time, only 24 red zone targets was was surprising to see. Red zone receptions, Cooper Cup again leading the way. Devontae Adams, no surprise there uh, because Devontae Adams obviously had that chemistry with Aaron Rodgers at the goal line where it was just you get you get within five yards of the goal line and you know pretty much that they're going to take a shot to Devontae Adams with that little out route. Tyreek Hill, Stefan Diggs, Hunter Renfro with 27 red zone receptions. So something's going to have to give between him and Devontae Adams this year, you would think. I, I find it hard to imagine that both of them will finish this high in terms of red zone receptions because you don't really see like any teammates doubled up here, right? There's nobody really doubled up here that are teammates. Uh, well, that aren't teammates now, but we're not teammates last year. 
Um, Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams, you would have to assume something's going to give here. So it's going to be interesting to see if Adams or Renfro's numbers come down. Allen, Evans, Mike Evans, even though you get a ton of volume not really there for him, he's the guy in the red zone for Tampa Bay. They're looking for him every single time, and he wins those matchups a majority of the time. Deontay Johnson, Jamar Chase, DK Metcalf, again, not a lot of volume, but we know he's the guy in the red zone. Pittman, McLaurin, Cooks, Waddle, Moore, Brown, Lamb. CeeDee Lamb with only 10 receptions. That one does surprise me a little bit because uh, even though he didn't get a ton of targets, uh, even though he didn't get a ton of targets in the red zone, uh, coming in with only, uh, what was it again, 22, um, to only catch 10 of those 22 targets, I would expect a little bit more, especially with how good he is with his route running, man. He should be winning a lot of those routes in the red zone. Darnell Mooney, and again, Debo Samuel with only nine red zone receptions. Red zone touchdowns, Cooper Cup led the way. All 16 of his touchdowns came in the red zone. Mike Evans, 13 of his 14 did. Devontae Adams, DK Metcalf, both tied with 11. Diggs and Jefferson, all 10 of theirs came inside the red zone last year. And then Renfro, Chase. It was it, Here's the thing with Chase, too. Uh, I, I like Chase a lot because of the fact that he isn't really having to score all of those touchdowns in the red zone. The guy can strike from anywhere on the field. Uh, and we see that 14 receiving touchdowns last year. Only nine of them came in the red zone. Hill, Johnson, Allen, Pittman, Waddle, Lamb, McLaurin, Cooks, Moore, Brown, Mooney, and Debo. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the end here. And let's see what the average was of everybody in terms of their volume score here. Oh, Cooper Cup, number one. He got a one, right? And the lower your number, the better, because it means you finished higher within the rankings. But Cooper Cup, number one, is because he led every single category. He led every single category. He comes in with a perfect one. Devontae Adams, Deontay Johnson, coming in at a three is extremely surprising. Um, given how bad Ben Roethlisberger was last year, Deontay Johnson finishing as high as he did over the tops of guys like Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, really all of these guys, knowing that Deontay Johnson was a solid contributor all around in the passing game. You got to hope whether it's Pickett or Mitchie Biscuits, they're out there slinging the ball to Deontay Johnson. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see with all the weapons that they have there right now. Uh, you know, does anybody take a hit in targets? So I'm not passing on Deontay Johnson specifically yet, uh, but because of the unknown of the quarterback situation and because of Najee Harris being there, uh, you know, drafting guys, the muth is the muth going to take a step forward this year. All interesting things to keep in mind with Deontay Johnson. And again, Jefferson, Diggs, Hill, Chase, Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, Hunter Renfro. I mean, Hunter Renfro finishing with a better score than Metcalf, Moore, McLaurin, Waddle, Pittman, Cooks, Mooney, Lamb, Samuel, and Brown. I mean, that's pretty impressive right there. Good job for Hunter Renfro. Hopefully he keeps it up this year. DJ Moore, again, you know, not great there in terms of uh, the volume and touchdowns, but his volume everywhere else really kind of still solidified him as a guy that honestly... We're not passing on him as my is our wide receiver too, and we'll have more videos to talk about it this offseason. But you know, if you have a really strong running back core, um, and taking DJ Moore as your wide receiver too, I think that could win some championships this year. McLaurin, Waddle, Pittman, Cooks, Mooney, CD Lamb with a very, very low score on uh on, on all the uh volume stats here. You know, again, you have to assume that. That's going to change this year, uh, and he'll get back to being, or he'll get to being a little bit higher with no more Amari Cooper. Debo Samuel, I mean, you know, the receiving yards were there, right? But not really the receiving touchdowns, not the targets, not the receptions. As a true wide receiver, Debo Samuel, if you look just at the wide receiver numbers l last year, and you really kind of say, okay, the receiving yards were great, but look at everything else, he was really mediocre as a wide receiver last year. Um, he wasn't really a top option. So for those people who are saying that they're wanting to draft him as high as like the wide receiver two, I'm kind of iffy on that because I don't know if he's going to get all of those all of those uh, rushing attempts last year that he got. And if he doesn't, that is where some you know some some issues could come into play with some consistency problems because he's just not going to be putting up those numbers on a constant basis. So. Really weird to see Debo Samuel all the way down there, but we'll see where he we'll we'll see where he finishes when it comes to the uh, uh, efficiency categories and just how high up he is there. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's uh, number one volume wide receivers. Don't forget wide receiver efficiency is going to be coming out very soon, so make sure you check that out. 
Hit the like button for me on this video. Let's see if we can get this thing up over 500 likes. Subscribe if you're new here to the Fancy Headliners. You're not going to want to miss out on all of our content. And make sure you leave me a comment down below. Anything about these numbers surprise you? Anything that you look at and say, hmm, something's a little bit off here. Something seems odd or I was surprised by this. You know, let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are with all this information as well. And maybe we'll discuss a few of those things back and forth. But ladies and gentlemen, I am going to get out of here. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great I was going to say weekend, but actually the weekend's finishing up right now. I'm just, I'm kind of all over the place. I've been coaching all weekend. My brain's fried, but that's all right. I'm going to get out here, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Analytics, all the chain, all the channels, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline Nation, we running the game. Y'all stuck on third down. Your content's plain chain. Headliners on top now. We gonna move and change podcast off the rip. Draft guy, so legit. Fantasy world, our game tight. You know we about that job life. Stuck in a rut and you need some motivation. Face head to the channel for this headliner nation. I'm a headliner.